A very good morning and welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television. I am Ashwarya Kapoor. You with you. And in the next 30 minutes, I will be getting you the day's biggest news stories and also what to expect in the day ahead, starting with the headlines. Samajwadi Party and Congress formalize alliance in Uttar Pradesh. SP to contest on 298 seats. Congress on 105. Tamil Nadu government to move bills replaced a jelly cutter ordinance as assembly session begins today state issues guidelines for holding bull baiting event after three deaths investigations to begin into hirakon express saw derailment in andhra pradesh that left 41 people dead railway minister visits accident spot central and state teams continue rescue and relief And the Sainal Nehwal claims the Malaysia Masters title defeats a Thai finalist in a 46-minute clash. A big story this morning coming in from Uttar Pradesh. Well, after days of hectic parleys, the Samajwadi Party Congress alliance in the state has been sealed. Well, the Samajwadi Party will contest on 298 seats and the Congress on 105. Remember, the UP Assembly polls will be held in seven phases for the 403 seats. After hectic parleys, an alliance between the Samajwadi Party and the Congress has been formalized. Of the 403 seats for the Uttar Pradesh Assembly, the Samajwadi Party will contest in the lion's share of 298 seats. The Congress will fight on 105. Samajwadi Party and Congress Party, 2017's election, will be fought. We will. कांग्रेस पार्टी के 105 उम्मीदवार इस 2017 के चुनाव में चुनाव में उतारेंगे For the Congress seat sharing talks were hitting a roadblock but the alliance is reported to have come through after Sonia Gandhi's intervention the party says it is to ensure that the BJP is stopped from returning to power after 15 years दोनों पार्टियां पूरी मुस्तैदी और मेहनत से The Congress leaders sought to dismiss reports that the delay in the alliance was because lightweight emissaries like election strategist Prashant Kishore were involved in talks. The party asserted the top leaders like Priyanka Gandhi played a crucial role. अगर हम सब political parties अलग अलग लड़े, secular parties अलग लड़े, समाजवादी अलग लड़े, Congress अलग लड़े, BSP अलग लड़े, तो BJP The party say the common minimum program will be finalised within a week of the alliance coming to power. Awam chunegi antme or nitiyo ke aadhar pe karik aadhar pe or kya wo pranta ka karna chahte hain, dekhna chahte hain kis tarah ka vikas dekhna chahte hain aur usme ye jo kathbandhan hua bahut saksham hai. Leaders like RJD President Lalu Prasad also played a behind-the-scene role in coming together of the two parties. Following the alliance, he tweeted, "I have been consistently in talks with the Samajwadi Party and Congress's top leadership for stitching an alliance between the two parties in Uttar Pradesh. Given the SP and Congress's performance in the last assembly polls, the new alliance could pose a tough challenge to its rivals." Panchan Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And reacting to the alliance, the BJP that is looking for a comeback in uh, power in the crucial state says it will have no impact on the election results. But BJP says it is hopeful of a win. Bharti Janata Party har chunauti ka samna karne ke liye tayar hai. Sapa aur Congress hi nahi, usme Basma bhi mil jaye, tab bhi Bharat pa 300 se jada seete jitegi aur Uttar Pradesh mein sarkar banegi. Meanwhile, Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav released his party's election manifesto on Sunday, promising a number of schemes. While well, the manifesto announced distribution of laptops, uh, Kanya Vidya Dhan, Samajwadi Party pension, uh, laying of uh, Purvanchal and Bundelkhand uh, Terai Expressway, and establishing model villages, besides improving helplines for police and women. Another highlight of the manifesto was the setting up of the farmers fund called the Samajwadi Kisan Kosh for farmers to purchase seeds and fertilizers. While the 32-page manifesto carried the photographs of Akhilesh Yadav and Mulayam Singh Yadav, there were no pictures of Shiv Pal Yadav. Now, Mulayam Singh Yadav also skipped the party manifesto release event. So, जिन्होंने नारा दिया अच्छे दिन का, 
जिन्होंने कहा कि हम सबका साथ लेकर के सबका विकास करेंगे बताओ अब तो तीन साल हो गए हैं जनता हमारे पुराने कामों को देखते हुए हमारे इन वादों पर विश्वास करेगी और हमारी समाजवादी सरकार पिछली बार की तरह न केवल अपने वादों को पूरा करेगी बल्कि आगे बढ़कर के प्रदेश की खुशहाली और विकास के लिए और भी नए नए काम करेगी एक बार जो वादे किए गए जो घोषणा पत्र में वो पूरे नहीं हुए नए वादों की फेरिस्त है जनता के पास समय है जनता मूल्यांकन करेगी इन्होंने खासकर अपने वोटो के स्वार्थ में जो किस्म किस्म की प्रलोभन भरी चुनावी घोषणाएं आदि की हैं, तो उससे प्रदेश की जनता इनसे प्रभावित होने वाली नहीं है अपराधी सत्ता के संरक्षण में पूरे उत्तर प्रदेश में सपा सरकार के कार्यकाल में नंगा नाच करते रहे महिलाओं के प्रति अपराध की घटनाओं की बाढ़ आ गई And after the SP and the Congress announced the alliance, the Samajwadi Party released its list of 77 candidates. It, however, left three seats for the Congress in Rai Bareilly. Well, with this list, the SP has so far released tickets for 285 candidates for the state polls. It left three seats for Congress in its pocket or borough of Rai Bareilly and announced its candidates on the rest three. Now, besides, the ruling party has not fielded any candidate for Kunda seat where Raghuraj Pratap Singh, alias Raja Bhaiya, is sitting as independent MLA and is a minister in Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav's cabinet. Well, the party has announced list of candidates in Pratapgarh, Allahabad, Jalaun, Jhansi, Lalitpur, Gonda, Sultanpur, Kushinagar and Diora as well as Mao. And as after the Smartwadi Party and the Congress decided to contest the UP Assembly elections as alliance partners, and the Congress also released its list of uh, 43 candidates for UP Assembly elections for the first and the second phase of beginning 11th of February. Okay, Congress has given a ticket to former Union Minister Jitin Prasad, who hails from a prominent uh, political family of Uttar Pradesh and has also fielded a heavyweight MLA Amarpal Sharma, a BSP defector from the Sahibabad seat. Well, the Congress is contesting 105 seats in alliance with the Samajwadi Party and may soon come out with its second list of candidates as well. Meanwhile, the BJP released its second list of candidates for Uttar Pradesh, where a list of 155 candidates includes uh, Pankaj Singh, the son of uh, Home Minister Rajnath Singh, Siddharth Nath Singh and uh, Rita Bahuguna Joshi. Now, with the latest list, the party has so far announced the names of 304 candidates. Now, these are, however, no, there are no Muslim nominees in the list. Besides Singh, who makes his electoral debut from Noida, the party's National Secretary Siddharth Nath Singh, Rita Bahuguna Joshi, who left Congress to join the BJP, as well as uh, Miganka Singh, daughter of uh, Kairana MP Hukum Singh, are among the party candidates. While announcing the list, the party said that it represents all sections of people and it is confident of a two-thirds majority in the state. Remember, the seven-phase uh, polls in the state will take place on 11th, 15th, 19th, 23rd, 27th of uh, February, 4th and 8th of March. 155 Party Uttar Pradesh और जैसा मैंने बताया 304 नाम पूरे हो चुके हैं सभी वर्ग को सभी समुदाय सभी वर्गों को इसमें प्रतिनिधित्व मिला है News from Punjab now. Well, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley on Sunday released a BJP's manifesto for the upcoming Punjab Assembly elections in Jalandhar. But in its 16-page manifesto, BJP promised a number of populist schemes like providing sugar and ghee at low prices, houses to the poor, land to Dalits and backwards, besides assuring 5 lakh rupees assistance to the families affected by militancy. Well, the manifesto also talks of setting up of a Farmers' Income Commission, which will provide an assistance of 10 lakh rupees to the families of traders or farmers in the event of this sudden death. And the developmental activity of Vikas Diye Gathividi in Punjab has been done in the past five years of the government has been made and that will be the first step and that will be the expansion of the government. 
News from Uttarakhand. Now the Congress released its list of 63 candidates for the 70-member Uttarakhand Assembly. Now Chief Minister Harish Rawat will uh, con contest uh, from the seats of uh, Kitcha and Haridwar Rural. Well, the candidates were decided at a meeting of the party's Central Election Committee chaired by Congress President Sonia Gandhi. Well, prominent among the candidates are State Ministers uh, Indira Ridesh, uh, who will contest from Haldwani, Surendra Singh Negi, who will contest from Kordwar, and Dinesh Agarwal, who will contest from Dharampur. Well, Assembly elections in the 70-member Uttarakhand Assembly is scheduled to take place on 15th of February. However, the supporters of disappointed ticket seekers of the state congress vandalized the party office in Dehradun and raised slogans against Chief Minister Harish Rawat. कुछ लोग कांग्रेस को मटिया मेंट कर देना चाहते हैं, कुछ लोग उत्तराखंडियत को मटिया मेंट कर देना चाहते हैं, तो दोनों ताकतों से दोनों ताकतें एक ही चेहरे के नीचे हैं, तो उससे लड़ाई है। मुख्यमंत्री जी ने कहा था कि उन्हें जाए टिकट देंगे, तुम जाए अपने काम करते रहो, कार्य करते रहो। वो इतना कार्य कर रहे हैं, हर क्षेत्र में घूम घाम उन्होंने इतनी मेहनत करी, उसके बाद टिकट किसी और को दे रहे हैं, ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए। हम नरेन and the election commission officials have seized over 83 crore rupees in cash, 7.36 lakh liter liquor, as well as 1,485 kilograms of drugs in five poll bound states. Well, as per official data compiled since the announcement of the polls, now UP has witnessed the maximum seizure of 79.13 crore rupees, followed by 4.05 crore rupees from Punjab, 33.27 lakh in Uttarakhand, and 6.95 lakh rupees in Manipur. Well, close to 4 lakh litres of uh, liquor worth 10 crore rupees has also been seized from Uttar Pradesh. Now, drug seizures were seen uh, maximum in Punjab as a total haul of was uh, recorded at 1,485 kilograms valued at uh, 10 crore rupees. <laughs> and in breakfast news, time for a very short break. We'll be back with more news. Stay with us. Tales that inspire. Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate. Inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries. relics of Buddha were unearthed in Piprava in Uttar Pradesh. Buddha. Buddhist monks from all over the world visit the National Museum to pay their respects. These charred bone fragments of Buddha are housed in the gold canopy gifted by the royal family of Thailand. Well, thanks for staying with us. Uh, now, three people were killed in Tamil Nadu on the first day of the bull uh, baiting sport uh, as it was uh, conducted in various parts of the state on Sunday. Now, following the deaths, the state government issued guidelines including CCTV surveillance and medical examination of bulls to ensure the safe conduct of the sport. Now, with an ordinance being promulgated for holding Jallikatta, the sport was organized in several parts of Tamil Nadu in which two persons were killed and 28 others injured when they were gored by a bull in which several bulls were used and many sportsmen took part. In another incident, a 48-year-old man died due to dehydration in Madurai city when he was taking part in protests along with students and youths demanding a permanent solution for holding Jali Kata. Earlier in the day, protests in Alanangur did not allow Chief Minister Opanir Selvam to inaugurate the festival as they were demanding a permanent solution. Later, the Chief Minister said that even though Jalikattu was not held there, it was organized uh, smoothly in many places all over the state. Now, the Tamil Nadu government will introduce a draft bill to amend the law in the state legislature today. <laughs> Pulih, awas sahaja setan perempit terkendali. 
நிலையான நீடித்த சட்டம் என்பதை தெரிவித்துக் கொள்கிறேன் களத்துக்குள்ள போய் போராடல நாங்க எல்லாத்தையும் மன்றாடி கேட்டுக்கிறோம் இங்க இருக்க மினிஸ்டர்ஸ் இங்க இருக்கிற அரசியல் கட்சி தலைவர்கள் கெஞ்சி கேட்டுக்கிறோம் எங்க போராட்டம் முழுசா வெற்றி அடையில வரைக்கும் இந்த ரேக்கா பந்து எங்களுக்கு இந்த ஜல்லிக்கட்டு எல்லாம் நிப்பாட்டுங்க we need for the permanent solution we need to remove bull from the wild animal list so that we can take back that law so we need the permanent solution to every 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 year we cannot come and protest here to fight for our culture and investigations into into the hirakand express derailment will begin from today well the probe will be headed jointly by the railway safety commissioner and the south central commissioner of hyderabad circle at the railway officers guest house in raigarh Meanwhile railway minister Suresh Prabhu visited the accident spot at Kuneru station and subsequently visited the district headquarters hospital to check on the conditions of the injured most of whom are from Odisha Mr Suresh Prabhu said that a stringent action will be taken against those who were found responsible while well, the railways has announced a compensation of 2 lakh rupees each for the kin of those killed and 50000 rupees each for the injured Remember 41 passengers were killed and more than 110 people injured when the train rolled off the track near Kunneru station in Vijayanagaram district of Andhra Pradesh the train was going to Bhubaneswar जो भी वजह हो सकती है वो वजह पूरी तरह से जांच की जाएगी और जो भी उसमें जिम्मेदार होगा उसके खिलाफ हम सख्त कार्रवाई भी करेंगे News from the northeast now well militants ambushed a convoy of assam rifles on sunday killing two security personnel on the spot and injuring two others in the northeastern arunachal pradesh district well the rebels reportedly lobbed grenades targeting four assam rifles vehicles on national highway in uh, changalang district the security personnel also retaliated and two militants were killed in the operation now, following the encounter the nearby Indo Myanmar border has now been sealed and helicopters have been placed into service to spot the militants hiding in the nearby jungles the entire area has been cordoned off and combing operations have been stepped up in the area the band uh, alpha in a statement claimed that it had carried out the attack along with the four other organizations now rajyapur pradesh chief minister pema khandu has condemned the ambush and has announced an expressia from a chief minister's relief fund as per government uh, laid down norms uh, to the next of the kings of those martyred yeah the colcom alpha and asian tinta thaka boli honde kora ase tinta hai do jana hoto hoyse hoy on the some other news now well the premier stock exchange bsc will launch an initial public offering today the initial share sale which will also be the first this year closes on 25th of january now asia's oldest stock exchange bsc has fixed the price band at 805 to 806 rupees per share through which it aims to raise up to 1243 crore rupees significantly bsc currently offers 85% of the net profit as dividends and it plans to continue with a high dividend policy in the future as well well noting uh, that there were various uh, revenue drivers uh, for the exchange including the newly launched international exchange at uh, gujarat's uh, uh, gift city well uh, the bsc ceo said that uh, uh, in fact it needs to improve its market share in various segments now bsc has a 13% market share in equities the cash segment while it is uh, equity derivative trades is also sharply declined and is far behind its uh, closest competitor nsc but during the ipo shareholders will sell 15.43 million shares estimated to be around 1243 crore rupees at the higher end of the price band and what uh, all uh, will be making a news through the day let's take a look in the day ahead The Supreme Court will hear a plea seeking postponement of the union budget presentation after the assembly elections in five states uh, are completed on uh, 8th of March. The plea argues that the presentation of budget violates the model code of conduct which has come into force with the announcement of uh, the election schedule. Now seven opposition parties have approached the election commission to demand the fiscal exercise be deferred till after 8th of March. The Supreme Court is likely to pronounce its order on the action to be taken on a report of its panel which has held that prima facie there was an attempt to influence investigation in the coal block allocation scam cases by former CBI director Ranjit Sinha. The court had on 12th of July last year reserved the order on the issue after Attorney General Mukul Rothke told the bench 
that the panel has held that uh, Ranjit Sinha's meet uh, with some high profile accused in the scam. Delhi High Court will hear a plea on a missing JNU student uh, Najib Ahmed in its last hearing on 22nd of December. The court had asked the police to take all necessary steps to track the student. Now, Najib has been missing since October 15 after he had a scuffle at his hostel. Now, a reward of uh, 10 lakh rupees has been announced by the police on any information about him. All right, let's get you some international news. Uh, well, the weekend saw renewed fighting in Yemen in which 70 people were killed. Now, airstrikes by a Saudi-led coalition and fighting near the strategic uh, Bab al-Madab Strait killed at least 54 fighters of the Shiite Houthi rebels as well as the allies uh, troops uh, who are loyal to ex-president uh, Ali Abdullah Saleh. Now, 14 members of the pro-government forces were also killed. This comes as uh, pro-government uh, forces are pushing to oust rebels from a key stretch of coastline. Now, coalition warplanes and uh, attack helicopters have been pounding rebels in support of President uh, Hadi forces that are advancing towards uh, the Red Sea city of Mocha. Remember, the Yemen conflict began when Hadi was ousted by rebel Houthi forces, which now control the capital Sana and much of the Red Sea coastal areas of the country. More international news in World Rap. The Gambia's uh, former president, uh, Yaya Jame, has uh, left the country in the wake of elections that ousted him after 22 years in power. Now, Jame was uh, defeated in December's election by Adama Barrow, but he went on to challenge those results. While troops from several West African nations have been deployed in Gambia, threatening to drive Jame out of office if he did not agree to go. U.S. President Donald Trump on Sunday invited Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to visit him in Washington next month. Well, just hours before the telephone call, Israel approved hundreds of new settled homes in East Jerusalem. The two leaders agreed to continue to closely consult on regional issues, including addressing the threats posed by Iran. However, there was no mention of Trump's suggestion to move the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. The Islamic State blew up a landmark hotel in western Mosul on Friday to prevent advancing uh, Iraqi forces from using it as a base in their offensive to capture the city. The Mosul Hotel stands close to the Tigris River which divides the city. Iraqi forces say that they have uh, taken almost full control of Mosul East and now preparing to attack the Western Bank. British Prime Minister Theresa May faces a landmark court ruling on Tuesday that could put a dent in her Brexit plans. But the Supreme Court will decide whether she can use her executive powers to begin formal talks on leaving the EU or whether she must seek a prior approval from Parliament. Well, May has promised to trigger Article 50 of the EU's Lisbon Treaty beginning two years of divorce talks by the end of March. Good news are coming in from the sports section. Well, ace Indian shuttler Sana Nehwal notched up her first title after a career-threatening injury by claiming the Malaysian Masters Grand Prix gold with a hard-fought victory in the summit clash at uh, uh, Sarwak on Sunday. Well, up against 18-year-old Thai Pon Pai Cho Chung Wong, the top-seeded uh, London Olympics bronze medalist triumphed 22-20, 22-20, in a 46-minute clash, the two were meeting for the first time in the circuit and Saina was on the back foot in the opening game when Cho Chung Wong reeled off four consecutive points to grab the early initiative. Well, it was uh, this was her 23rd title overall and first after last year's Australian Open. Ranking points here today is certainly going to help Cho Chung Wong. And on to cricket now. Well, England defeated India by five runs in the third and final uh, Cricket One Day International to prevent a clean sweep at the Eden Gardens. While chasing a target of 322 runs, India were cruising along with the 27 needed from their final three overs. But the match turned in England's favour in the 48th over with the home side scoring just four runs from it while losing the wicket off R. Ashwin. Earlier, India lost uh, the inform uh, Virat Kohli for 55, while Yuvraj Singh uh, departed for 45 runs. But Jadav, who scored a career-best of 120 in the first ODI in Pune, kept them in the hunt. 
India still won the three-match series 2-1 uh, after their victories in the first and second ODIs in Pune and Katak, while England notched up their first win in this India tour. They also lost the five-match test series 4-0 before the ODI contest. Now the two sides are ahead for the three-match T20 international series beginning on 26th of January in Kanpur. We were with the ball in the second game, you know, to, to win that game for us. To pull it back was outstanding uh, when it was difficult to grip the ball. And um, even today the partnership was outstanding between uh, Kedar and Hardik after being 170 odd for five. All experienced guys back. But I think these guys have shown character and, and stuck it out whenever we've been under pressure. And that for me is, is the standout from this series as a captain. The way the, the relatively newer guys have performed and the way you know, MS and UV have come back into, into their own. It's nice to come back here and get rid of any of the, the bad memories from that game, but you know, as I said, it was just a, another game of cricket to focus on, and um, yeah, nice to get the win here. And in tennis, so world number one Andy Murray made a shock exit from the Australian Open at Melbourne. Well, in the fourth round game, well, Murray was stunned by unseeded German uh, Michel Zverev, 5-7, 7-5, 2-6, 4-6. Meanwhile, in another match, Roger Federer overhauled uh, fifth seed uh, K. Nishikori 6-7, 6-4, 6-1, 4-6, to book a place in the quarterfinals. Meanwhile, in the women's uh, singles event, a top seed and uh, reigning champion Angelique Kerber was uh, bundled out of the fourth round by big-hitting American Coco Van Der Weck 6-2, 6-3. While Venus Williams advanced to the quarterfinals after defeating Germany's uh, Mona Barthel 6-3-7-5. She will now face uh, Russia's Anastasia Pavluchenkov in the quarterfinal. Meanwhile, in the women's doubles, the fourth seed Indo-Czech pair of San Amirza and Barbara Strykova crashed out in the third round after losing uh, to unseeded Japanese team of Eri Hozumi and uh, Miu Kato 6-3-6-6-2-2-6. And in the mixed doubles, uh, well, Leanne Pace and Martina Hingis progressed to the second round. Uh, Sanya and Rohan Bopanna have uh, their partners uh, have already made it to remember to the mixed doubles second round. Well, that's it from me and my team in this edition of News. But news and updates continue on Rajasabha Television. Thanks for watching.